Okay, so loading right back up, and since I left the game like that for the quality control, which is pretty good, I must say it's some of my best yet, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have to re-roll the act, and hopefully we get the butcher. He's a real fun boss battle. So let's go ahead and pull up the map again, and it's going to be... Nope, it's not the Butcher, but we can go and, you know, that'll be extra blood gems if we do. And that one's fun, fighting the Queen, Big Spider, and my fireballs do her in every time. So let's go ahead and just start some boss runs here. I think it's a little more interesting concept. Each boss has its own certain style of play. I should have had those cast already, so they're charging, but they're strong enough that we can just try to slow them off. And as long as you get a, a 5 charge on your power, then it's usually pretty good, especially in the Witch Doctor's case. So basically with this build, on top of the... I wanted to use the fi fire as the primary, just because it's good against like skeletons and spiders and any of the insect type, basically. I mean, they're already pretty weak, but... It's always fun to keep <laughs> so as you can see, the battles take a lot longer on this difficulty set. But that's okay, the reward payout is very lucrative. And hopefully I didn't scare that goblin there. The little guy with the bag of gold up there will drop basically all kinds of special items. Lots of rares, and if he drops a legendary, it's really good. But we're going to have to kind of run away from him now. And it looks like he already moved. Yeah, one of my fireballs must have stray hit him. But he's right here when they run from an attack like that, they won't teleport out, but... If you walk up on them and scare them, and once they get off screen, they're going to open the teleport immediately. As you can see, that was two rare items, and all kinds of gems, and jewels, and a regular item. Grass for the dead, and condemn damage for the crusader. That's okay. I've got my other Crusader with some crafted items, so... And this one is kill 100 enemies, and we get the bonus chest. I'll complete this one other time, but really have to wait until they start spawning rapid. There we go. And this is actually pretty hard for my character class. I could have a different fireball that was uh, bouncing between the enemies instead of this one column shoots one at a time or two at a time, you know? But there's actually a move with the Witch Doctor where it actually bounces between them. And we missed the timer, but that's okay. Some days this game does take a little bit to warm up on. So that was 91, almost. Nine shy. And we still get a rare item, a magic item, and two gems, so that's still a good find. And here's another hero, uh, Arsec, the Venomous. And when they have a special name like that, you just kind of have to play them to know exactly what they do. See, he's doing double poisons. He can drop the little area, and he can drop the lines. And the lines are really powerful, they drop tons of damage. As you can see, I can almost stand in it. And as you can see, I didn't even need zombie dogs to get him down. It's just a matter of time and gear. Once you hit 70, just try to play through the last act on the highest difficulty you can. And then that way, your first playthrough, you'll get the best stuff for your current level. And here's another goblin, so 
see if we can grab them up. There we go. We're getting really lucky with those two rares, two gems, a magic, and some pieces. And all the, that part is the lowest class of the crafting at level 70. So these guys are illusionist, so they'll make clones of themselves here. Which really doesn't make sense to them, it just lets them power up very quickly. And then mortar, which isn't that strong, unless multiple hit, like there happen. But the wall is pretty bad. Knockback doesn't really matter in this one since the walls are present. So as you can see, it's just waves and waves. And these are the special enemies that have powers. Illusionist and some Molten and Minion. My character class, though, is he's built for pure healing. Every time I'm dealing damage, he's using life steal. And then all the zombie dogs are also life steal. And there's the hero of the bunch. And this guy will have all the same stats, but he'll have a couple extra. So he's poison enchanted on top of Molten. And Molten will cause that explosion there. And those are highly damaged. And right now my resistance is so cranked out that I can basically stand in the poison clouds and the everything that's not really fire based. there it took over half so just one explosion like that can knock you out in any battle and that's with some pretty good resistance to it
So as you can see, the spiders are actually, they die so quickly I don't have time to power up my intelligence again. I mean, I just sit there and kill them too much too, but when you're running through it, it's a lot faster if you do avoid enemies at some places, but really you want to kill anything you do come across and then continue path. Uh, heroes and elites will actually follow you for quite a distance afterwards. And here's the queen, so get right into this battle and hopefully I'll just grab a single charge. She's going to have some other spiders come out when she gets low health here. She's up to, yeah, 279 million. So it's going to take a little bit. And this is where the grind comes into play. And when you're fighting, like, stuff that is actually better geared than you, like if you're fighting a level 70 monster at this same, like, level of play on Torment, it's, yeah, expect to die. <laughs> like in the first episode, that was one of the main hints is that everyone dies, you know, that's part of the game. But you still obtain lots of loot and stuff. And oftentimes, like multiplayer, you can actually save your friends Say if someone actually fell here, instead of having the checkpoint automatically reload, you can have some time for your friend to kind of distract. So multiplayer makes bosses a lot easier. It's really pattern based. If you start to know the ways they come out, like there I only got three of them. But I was trying for the four that were on the actual fighting floor. And I haven't even used the dogs yet. But if I, you know, explode them and then recast them again. And that was an early recast. They were actually still regenerating. I'll show you the, that to you here pretty soon. All the skill setup is a really fun play dynamic. And we'll finish it with the dogs. <laughs> So that was three rares there. Uh, some focuses for the wizard. I haven't really even started collecting. Even though this is the class to collect sorcerer gear with, because they both share the intelligence stat. Some bounties we just kind of continue on. And we'll fight the skeleton king, I believe, yeah. Or clear the points, or there might be something, you know, pertaining to how many enemies you have to kill. That will often determine how long the bounty is going to take. So it's still asking me to take a waypoint. It doesn't look like anything's there. Maybe there is an order to it now. Let's continue in here. Might have to actually be in the area to fight him for it to be active. The skeleton King. And this guy actually, last time I fought him, I could just stand there. If you get your life steal and your defense set a little bit, I'm going all resistance. So right now it's in this 70% range. And it's doing okay. It's still tournament level. I can go to different acts, and the difficulty does get a lot higher. For now, this is pretty good. Okay, so I just cast on him, and even with my gargantuan going. And then he'll cast some guys out here for us to use the soul harvest on. Hopefully five. Yeah, five. 
As you can see, Torment Mode, he casts a lot of skeletons at once. It's pretty much the highest rate at which you'll see things spawn at. And then from the different Torment sliders, the higher you go is uh, how much million, or how many million hit points they have. So he has 357. And that's pretty high for getting on the Torment skill alone difficulty is hard. So I'm, you know, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Invested enough time, I should say. Because it really does get down to point and click. So if I can get my magic find even a little bit higher, and we'll go ahead and recharge. Get another five. And say goodbye to the dogs. Actually, that was quite a few of them. Got all the enemies he summoned and then him for quite a bit. And since there's a lot, we'll go ahead and harvest again. As long as you keep your all your summons at max level, you'll do tremendous damage. So we kind of have to kill these guys off again. And hopefully my flame turret will kick in here. And he teleported right to us, so... That's his loss at this point. <laughs> I'm using the chill piranhas now. So they're working really good. It's, it's all expansion content. But in my opinion, it's worth the price. I play the game enough and it's, it brings it to a, another level, you could say. And there's some rift shards again in a plan, so... Yeah, the Archon. Normally you can buy those. They cost quite a bit. So we'll go to town real quick and clear our inventory. I'm going to clear all those out first, and then we'll see how many we actually get from breaking all this down. And another three of these, so that 48. And it's the rare, it's one that required crafting items for a lot of things. You just need like one or two at a time, but they do add up. So basically I'm just going to go over anything and see right there it says poison dart damage, so I'm not even going to attempt keeping those. And that's three slots of gargantuan damage, but it only does the intelligence. And actually, that's a lot more attack, but sacrifice a lot of armor that way. And that one's pretty good as well, but the bleed damage is pretty good. You can actually get another item that amplifies that, and then you're doing tons, like almost 600% if you equip multiple items on top of it. I'm just going to go through and clear it. There was another three slot that could have been good, but it's okay. We can go back to him real quick and actually right click on the book and he'll learn something. And that was the Archon set. So it's it always set to highest usable, but if you select all, then you can see every item. You can craft for lower levels even. Like all the way down to level 9, those would work for. So if your friends are starting a new character or you're starting a new character, just invest some of the crafting materials. And you'll make plenty of gold, and by the time you're ready to play through again, you'll have plenty of gold to just break down every single item that you find. And then you have crafting materials beyond what you need. And as long as you play, you know, to keep all your items that way, like, your first cycle is going to be the hardest. But that's, you know, Diablo has always been a little bit of a challenging game. And so in that regard, if you play solo like I did with nobody else, just leveling up one character, it gets really involved with your having to learn your strategy. And for my character, it's kind of easy. You can use your summons as a, a wall the whole time. But sometimes it, it gets a lot tougher than that. So we're looking for the Archon. And it's actually, I think, yeah, right here. But there's some intelligence, dexterity. And these are all that I've already 
gained and collected each of these was a different book so I got all four stats of it and they're pretty good for level 60 you know entry level to torment in the expansion but if you're playing with the expansion from the get-go you'll probably be 70 or around 70 when you get to the end if you you know play on normal difficulty but if you're playing on the expert or master at least then you'll make that first playthrough a lot more lucrative and this shield right here is the Crusader shield I need to craft. But it takes uh, Forgotten Souls again. You can only get those from breaking down the legend quality at least. So the recipes are getting there. There's a lot of stuff I'd like to build, like the shoulders and stuff like this. But I already have some pretty good ones. I mean, those just dropped off of a guy. And they do a little bit of regen and the resistance to all elements along with the just pure attack and armor boost that's really good set and you can always go back and change one of them like the increased gold and health pickups I could turn that down or change it and hopefully get something so that's worth looking at too all the mystic stuff is really cool I'm just gonna record this now and hopefully all mesh together and I don't know, maybe make a better episode we'll try though lost a lot of being able to play time so and this I need to change something but it is really good because the intelligence and the fire damage well pretty much it's all good I wonder if I can change the life after each kill to a, a life per hit though I'm not really sure what does what yet I'm just trying to experiment and it seems like see if I get that monster kills grant of experience it could probably be more of the Monster Grants experience, or it could be versions that are like that. Like, it used to be Magic Find all over, and now getting gear with Magic Find is, you know, it's craftable, the cane set. And it's really, it was, a, on the Xbox, the cane set made the world a difference. You just, you would get several legends every single run. So now that they've improved the drop rate on the PC version, because they did have to get rid of all the auction house. Like, there is a 44% better chance of finding magic. And that's just because it is the Nagel Ring. Each ring and trinket, I'm currently trying to find one called the Puzzle Ring. My friend Tim has it kind of low level. But still, it's cool. A little goblin follows and he picks up all the white. And people say you, you need all that for crafting and everything, but... We can maybe craft something with all this cash. We can do Imperials, but... At this level gameplay, if I play like Act 4, for instance, I would have chances of picking up these. And then I wouldn't even have to worry about bla blowing the 200,000. But building up to the flawless is tough. I've got a royal diamond, and that's my first royal diamond ever, and it, it took a lot. <laughs> I crafted everyone as far up as I could. And then the topazes, because I used so many of them just on armor and stuff alone. Because it adds incredible amounts of intelligence or whatever you want. For instance, you can just look at them. And this one gives you a better chance of finding magic items when you put it in your helmet. So that's the first one that I made of this level. I'm going for the royal right now. And hopefully I can get it. If I unsocketed it, I'd, I'm sure I could craft more. But once I take one out and craft it, it's a 3 to 1 conversion. So I'd lose two of my pretty good ones. So I'm going to try to just surely collect. I already have two, so it's ready for one more of the, the nicer crystals. They give 160 stats. But let's continue on now that we're kind of clear. I'm pretty sure we can pick anywhere in here now. Yeah, we killed the Skeleton King complete. And that wasn't a bounty for some reason. But these other ones are. <laughs> And for some reason, I only got four of them with that, which is kind of a bummer. We must have formed a line or something. So we can blow up the dogs now that more are running down. And just do a recast and you're back to your full healing capability if you're playing this class, of course. 
every class has a different play style. Like with my Crusader, I just walk in the middle of it and try to stun as much of it as I can at once. And then once it's stunned, then you basically have to fight one. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah, and so basically in those groups, I always go for these trample guys are really powerful. And the trees are not so... Like, you can kind of just concentrate on one and the other at the same time. But those big guys that can ram you and do their stun attack, it makes it very difficult. And right now, it's, it's still in Act 1. Even on the Torment, I should be playing on a lot higher. I should be like maybe Act 4, Act 5. I was doing runs with Diablo. And it was kind of... I'd have some really tricky parts if the heroes were just right. Like if they prison you while it's frozen. That's one of the hardest combos to beat. And here's the fields, but I don't think in an adventure mode anything will be here. Maybe though. We'll see. Oh, there's gold out of there. Like 10,000 gold, that's nice. And here's a boss, I believe. Yep. Yeah, this is the event for the farm. And the little guy will come out of that door up there when we're done. Well, we'll see. That's what happens normally. So this is the first time I've really played adventure mode. And to tell you the truth, it, it does feel like a different way to play Diablo. It's, it's more about farming, and it gives you the items, so... You do a little less damage, but in the long run, your survivability is much higher. So it gives a little bit of a stretched out battle. And once you get gear to complete your different torment levels, it's just mainly for challenge and, well, you do get a lot more experience and everything. And there I had to use a potion as the electric started dropping. And this part's actually it's pretty funny, so... Well, not really funny, Love but... Gargantuan's in the She's been long ever since the weather turned last week. Ah, it pleases you to stay with her. So be it. Oh, she's not at all. <laughs> See? I'm telling you, it's pretty funny. <laughs> and a resplendent chest that whole time was like, wow. That's nice. Mm -hmm.